Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the unveiling uh, this evening. Um, I'd first like to say thank you so much for your support for last week's show and all your emails. Uh, you can still follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and also um, if you wish to join into the show, the number will be coming up on the screen. Uh, it would be lovely to hear your opinions and uh, suggestions. Uh, this week's topic is about women, society and Islam and how we are perceived. Uh, I'm going to go on. Um, among the many topics of interest to non-Muslims, the status of Muslim women and uh, of their rights, or rather they perceive we've got a uh, lack of rights. Uh, it seems to be uh, it's the media's portrayal of women um, in Islam, uh, usually outlining the seems to contribute to this negative perception. When I was uh, first, uh, re when I first came into Islam and I was a reaver, um, there was lots and lots of times that I was asked in the street, oh, you know, how did you become a Muslim? You must have married a Muslim man, uh, all these. And then they asked you, you know, why are men allow so many wives? And it went on and on and on. And obviously, as you read up about it, um, you know that this isn't true. So we'd just like to try and clarify, uh, you know, women aren't as oppressed as people think they are in Islam. Uh, the main reason for this is that people often fail to dis distinguish between culture and religion, and the two things are completely different. In fact, Islam uh, condemns any, oppres any oppression of any kind, whether it's towards a woman or humankind in general. Sometimes uh, people see covered women and they think of this as an oppression. Uh, I was asked a lot of times, oh, you know, are you married and does your husband make you wear uh, the hijab and jilbab? Uh, in fact, no, I haven't got a husband, so it's not anybody making me wear it. Um, and this is uh, simply, we've gone over this before, this is simply because, you know, it's, it's in the Quran that Allah tries to guide us, um, guard us um, for our modesty, so that we become, you know, a woman, a, a modest woman, instead of an object. Uh, when Muslim women cover their hair and wear loose clothes, they are obeying the orders of their Lord to be modest, not cultural or social, um, social beings. In fact, Christian nuns cover their hair out of modesty, yet no one considers them oppressed. Uh, by following the command of Allah, Muslim women are doing the exact same thing, and the lives of the people who responded to the Quran have changed drastically. It had a tremendous impact on so many people, especially women since this was the first time that the souls of man and women were declared equal, with the same obligations as well as the same rewards. For the first time in history, women were granted economic independence in Islam. Uh, the money they bring in uh, to, ma to the marriage is theirs um, with what they want to do with it. They don't have to sp spend it on the home, it is simply their money. Uh, and women are allowed to choose uh, their own husbands, and in extreme cases, ask for divorce. So, you know, we've got a lot of um, things out there where people are saying that, um, you know, we have to have arranged marriages, you know, we're forced to marry this person without even seeing them. Uh, this is not the case at all. Obviously, Allah has given us so many rights in the Quran if only people would sort of sit, sit and listen. Um, and a woman has a right to be educated, uh, contrary to what the contemporary world might think. The responsibility is that of the person who is raising her. So. As well, we're allowed to go out there and we're allowed to get educated. Lots of educated people, women, um, um, and Islam is a religion that holds women in high regard. Uh, this is this is quite um, a, a controversial subject uh, about women that uh, you know they're oppressed by the men. They're uh, they're only there to obviously bear children, raise the children, and cook and clean, and ask their husband's permission to do things like go out and things like that. Uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says seeking knowledge is mandatory for every Muslim, male and female. Uh, men and women both have the capacity for learning and understanding, since it is also their obligation to promote good behavior and condemn bad behavior in all spheres of life. Muslim women must acquire the appropriate education to perform this duty in accordance with their own natural talents and interests. So obviously, you know, we're saying that, you know, Allah made us, Allah has made us equal. So uh, these are the things that we need to clarify. Uh, we're not under our husband's um, rules at all. We're under the rules and uh, we have to obey Allah and we obey with what he said. Women are, have got equal rights as well as men. Obviously men 
have uh, rights as into more physical aspects. Um, so obviously we're not as strong and physically as them. Uh, a man came to the prophet, peace be upon him, and asked who amongst my kinfolk is uh, worthy of my good companionship. The prophet, peace be upon him, replied, your mother. So here's another instance where we're, um, this is talking about um, a woman again, and this is the mother. And he replied, your mother, three times before saying your father. So this indicates um, the impact that a mother has on in a person's life in Islam. Uh, some women are highly honored in this great religion. Uh, they say the paradise is under your uh, mother's feet. So, you know, this just, this just says it all. The women are really, really highly regarded. Um, and Islam is a religion that treats women fairly. The Muslim woman was given a role, duties and rights, 1,400 years ago. So this is not a thing that's just come out all of a sudden. It was, it was granted to them 1,400 years ago, the independence of women's rights. Um, so, you know, uh, the, the people in the, well, not in the West, but, you know, there's lots of people that say that we, we, we just haven't got any rights, which is was not true. We just need to clarify this and hopefully inspire people out there to understand what the face is all about um, concerning, um, you know, the perception of women. Uh, you know, the, the prophet said, the best among you are those who are the best to their wives. So that's, so that's the men treating their wives. Um, you know, treating their wives with respect. Uh, this shows that Islam highly encourages treating the wives well. They should be uh, shown love, respect, and care. So there's a lot of uh, controversy of how the men treat their wives as well, which, uh, you know, this needs to be clarified. The women aren't classed as objects. They're not, they weren't made as objects. Um, you know, we were made, obviously, equal to men in, in our souls. Uh, the first of the wife's rights is to receive a dowry. So this is a gift from the husband, um, which is part of the marriage contract and required for the legality of the marriage. So here again, uh, you know, when a husband and uh, when a man and woman are about to marry, the husband, um, his obligation is to give a gift to the woman. Uh, so, uh, you know, we don't. A lot of marriages don't do that. Um, this is the obligation of a man. So if we were that oppressed, then you know, the men won't be giving the woman anything at all. Uh, the second right of a wife is maintenance. Uh, despite any wealth she may have, her husband is obligated to provide her with food, shelter and clothing. He is not forced, however, to spend beyond his capability and his wife is not entitled to make unreasonable demands. So while you're married, uh, the husband is obligated to feed, um, shelter, clothe you. It's the husband's responsibility to, to do that. A lot of um, people in today's society, the woman goes to work full time and so does the man and the woman also raises the children, does the cleaning, does the ironing, does the cooking. So, uh, you know, in Islam, this is uh, stated that um, women are to be equal. At a time when the rest of the world, um, from uh, Greece and Rome to India and China, considered women as no better than uh, children or slaves, uh, with no rights whatsoever, Islam acknowledged women's equality with them in um, re really, you know, a lot of respect. Uh, the Quran states, uh, and among his signs, is that he uh, created mates uh, for you from yourselves that you may find rest and peace of mind in them. So Allah has ordained uh, partners for, for, for us, man and woman, and he's ordained that. Um, he ordained between you uh, love and mercy, certainly herein indeed are signs for people who reflect. And that's in the Quran, and that's chapter 30, verse 21. So we can all see this in the Quran. Allah has, has done this way, way, way back in time. And this is um, how it should be now. Uh, a lot of culture these days are brought into the faith, um, and that's, I think that's a lot of where it stems from. Uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings upon him, said, uh, the most per perfect in faith amongst believers is he who is best in manners and kindest to his wife. That's the Prophet, um, peace be upon him, saying that. Uh, so that goes to say a lot. Um, you know, the husband is supposed to be treating and caring for his wife. Muslims believe that Adam and Eve were created from the same soul. So if Adam and Eve were created from the same soul, then, you know, so are we. Uh, both were uh, equally guilty of the sin and uh, fell from grace, and Allah forgave both of those. Many women in Islam have high, had high status. Consider uh, the fact that the first person to convert to Islam was Khadija, and that's Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him's wife, um, whom he loved and he respected highly. 
Uh, his favourite wife after Khadija's de death, Aisha, became renowned as a scholar and one of the greatest sources of Hadith literature. Uh, many of the female companions accomplished great deeds and achieved uh, fame and throughout Islamic history there have been famous and influential scholar, scholars and jurists. So, you know, it just goes to show when you read up on Islam that uh, women are, have got high regard in Islam and, um, you know, they can be educated and like you just said, you know, a lot of them have been influential and, and scholars. So we can't really, um, you know, we can't, we've got nothing to say about that really. It's just all the controversy and the things that uh, people hear and then they take it on board as to women are oppressed. Uh, with regard to education, both women and men have the same rights and obligations. Uh, this is clear in Prophet Muhammad saying, peace be upon him, seeking knowledge is mandatory for every believer. So if a woman's taken the shahada, then obviously she's a believer, she believes in Allah, she believes in uh, the books, she believes in the messenger and she believes in the angels. So, uh, you know, of course a woman I can go out there and get educated. Uh, you know, why should people say that they're tied to the kitchen sink? Uh, this implies men and women. A woman is to be treated as God has endowed her with rights, such as to be treated as an individual, with right to own and dispose of her own property. So here again, we've got property involved in this as well. So we've got education. Uh, you know, we've got we've got the man to take care of her. We've got the man to love and respect her. And now we've got property here, and uh, it's disposed of her own property and earnings. Um, enter into contracts even after marriage. She has the right to be educated and to work outside the home if if she so chooses. So she can she can be educated. She can own her own property. She can go out to work. Um, and she, she has the right to inherit from her father, mother and husband. So it's a very interesting point uh, to note that in Islam, unlike any other religion, a woman can be an imam and a leader of communal prayer uh, for, for a group of women. So here again, we've got, um, you know, she can be an imam and she can be a leader of communal prayer, um, you know, with a group of women. So all these things, uh, people have said, oh, you know, a woman can't do this, a woman can't do that. In fact, um, a woman has got a lot of rights here. Uh, it's just it's just really trying to make people understand um, understand and try and uh, get this uh, controversy away from us that women haven't got any rights at all. We've touched on quite a few here already uh, that women, you know, women are equal. Um, and it says in the Quran, uh, it's uh, verse 2, uh, it's chapter 2, verse 2 to 8, and it says, and for women are rights over men similar to those men, to those of men over women. So, you know, we've, we've got the same rights. Uh, but I had a lot of this when I came into Islam, uh, simply because uh, people have just listened to stories that have been made uh, from the past. They don't go back into history and have a look at actually uh, you know, what, what was in the Quran or the history of, of women. Uh, it also, in the West, you get, you, you know, in, the, in other societies, you get women that uh, their husbands, you know, they, they say, oh, you're not going out to work and they don't, you know, they don't allow them to be educated. So, uh, you know, we've just got to clarify this and try and get it out to uh, people and try and inspire them what Islam is about and what Allah has um, put in the Quran for us. Uh, you know, it's, and it also says here, feed, feed her uh, when you take your food, give her clothes to wear when you wear clothes and refrain from giving her, um, you know, any abuse and do not separate from your wife except within the house. And once a woman came to the prophet with a complaint against her husband and he told her there is no woman who removes something to replace it in its proper place with a view to tidying her husband's house, but that Allah sets it down as a virtue for her, nor is there a man who walks with his wife hand in hand, but that Allah sets it down as a virtue for him. So Allah setting these rules down, it's not us that's setting it down, it's Allah. And if he puts his arm around her shoulder in love, his virtue is increased tenfold. So, I mean, that's a big, big, um, that's a big, big saying there. And if he puts his arm around her shoulder in love, his virtue is increased tenfold. This is Allah speaking here. This is not, you know, this is not, I haven't made the rules up. Uh, society hasn't made the rules up. It's in the Quran for, for all to say. So this is another um, part of controversy that, uh, you know, it's just... A lot of it is controversy, and uh, a lot of it is, uh, it's just, 
uh, rumours that have gone round that have stuck for years and years and years and years. And it's just really, you know, going back into the history, reading up on it and, uh, you know, trying to get the, the, you know, the proper stories out there, the proper things from the Quran. This is where we've got to take it from. When you read the Quran and you read what Allah's put in there, then you, nobody can say anything against that. That is, that is the word of Allah and, and, and that is it. Uh, I mean, another topic we can talk about is, um, you know, the, the, the mothers again, this is, they're just so highly elevated in Islam. It, you know, the mother is regarded as, as, you know, the highest in the family. It's, it's the father after her. So what is that saying? She's, she's, it's, just, it's just amazing. I was really, really shocked when I came into Islam. Uh, for the respect uh, that uh, all the families that I've met, the respect for the mother is just, um, it's just tenfold. It's just, it's just unbelievable. The families that I've gone uh, around to, you know, you've got the daughters living there and you've got the children living there and the grandmas, but the daughters are running around doing all the cooking and seeing to the children and, you know, it's just, it's just absolutely amazing. They've just got so much respect for their mom. Um, and it's just, it's just lovely to see. Uh, and amongst the uh, clearest example of, of Islam's honouring woman is the great status of the mother in Islam. And Islam commands kindness, respect and obedience to parents and especially emphasises and gives preference to the mother, as shall be sh uh, shown in this article. Islam raises parents to a status greater than that found in any other re religion or ideology. So here we are again saying, um, you know, the mother is of a high status and she is very, very respected. She's not... Um, a mother is not thought of, oh, she gave birth to me, so what? Um, you know, that's it. Uh, you know, she is respected. And um, the command to be good to one's parents being, uh, begins right from the Quran. And Allah says, worship God and join not any partners with him and be kind to your parents. So here's another one from the Quran. Nobody can go against this. This is what Allah said. Um, you know, Allah is the Almighty. And he said, these, these are the rules he's, he's told us to be respectful to our mothers um, you know, and be kind to your parents. Um, and that uh, comes from the Quran. Uh, it's just when, you know, before I came to Islam, obviously I'm not a Muslim and our, our families are all, all different. We've got, I've got family scattered all over the place. You know, we don't, we don't hear from one another from one day to the next. So it's really, really, inspiring when I came into Islam and then I went round these families' houses and, and saw this. Um, you know, if, if today's society was all like that, it would be a wonderful place. But unfortunately, it's not. So we've just got to try and um, inspire people and motivate people, um, you know, to get this, these things across. Um, it says again, your Lord has decreed that you worship number him and that you are kind to your parents. Again, whether one or both of them attain old age in your life, say not to them a word of contempt nor repel them. So here again we're saying, you know, you mustn't disrespect your parents, you mustn't say anything against them. Um, you know, I've been in families before where they've, uh, I've, I've got relatives and things where their children, the children really, I've got no respect for, for the mum or, or for the father, they back chat, they, um, I've, I've heard one person say to his mum, oh, I hate you, I'm not doing that and I hate you, um, you know, and these are the things that uh, I've witnessed. Um, and out of kindness, uh, lower to them the wing of humility and say, my Lord, bestow on them your mercy even as, as they cherished me in childhood. Uh, and that's in the Quran, and uh, that's uh, chapter 23, and that's verse 24. So here we are again. My Lord, bestow on them your mercy, even as they cherish me in childhood. So Allah's uh, putting this in the Quran as well as mothers. So this is all about women. So there's loads and loads of things in the Quran. Uh, you know, if only we can get this, uh, the story across and um, educate people um, that we're not oppressed. Uh, we don't have to obey. Uh, yeah, we have to obey our husbands to a certain extent, but the one that we obey is Allah, the Almighty. He tells us what to do, and we have to obey him. Uh, Allah mentions uh, the reason why we should be kind to our parents uh, when he says, um, the mother bore constant suffering in pain and hardship from the first moment she felt the child moving in her womb uh, to the worst pangs during the time of delivery. So, you know, Allah mentions that, uh, why we should be kind to our parents. You know, 
a woman just doesn't give birth, you know, she goes through nine months of um, hormones. Uh, she goes, you know, it's, it's a real, real big thing, those nine months. And also when she uh, gives birth. Uh, we're going to take a small break now and uh, we'll be back shortly. Uh, keep following us, Facebook, Twitter, and also you can join in. Um, the telephone number will be along the screen soon. And uh, we'll see you shortly. Thank you.